Hello kids! How are you? I hope you're doing good and let's all come and worship our God this day and let's all enjoy the presence of God as we sing our worship and our praise dance songs and come on let's all stand up and let's glorify God through singing and dancing! Your presence 
with your power, your presence. They will know you're the light of the world. Holy Spirit, draw me near. Holy Spirit, we are here to seek your face and know. Hi kids! Welcome to Kids Church. My name is Teacher Tim. Now, how are you guys doing? What is something recent that you did? Uh, maybe you went to the beach, maybe you went hiking, or maybe you had a meal with your family, uh, friends, relatives, and maybe you had a lot of fun, alright, for the past days. Well, for today, I hope you're alive, alert, and awake for our lesson. Okay, now if you've noticed, last week we started a brand new series called Mighty Moms. Okay, and again, last week we talked about a mom named Sarah. And for this week, we're going to be talking about a mom named Joe Kebed. Okay, Joe Kebed. Are you familiar with this name or who that is? Okay, she is actually the mother of. Moses, okay? I just tried to pause so that you would try to guess, okay? But she's the mother of Moses, okay? You guys remember Moses, right? The man who split, or rather, the Red Sea. Um, the guy who led the, the Israelites out of Egypt, okay? That Moses, okay? Jochebed was the mother of Moses. And if you remember Moses' story when... He was a baby. He was placed in a basket. He was placed in a basket and he was left to float uh, in the river, right? So he float. He, he was floating inside a basket. Can you imagine, kids, a uh, baby floating in a basket, right? So we're going to be looking more into the story of Jochebed and how Moses, uh, Moses' life started. But before that, Let's first watch this video and let's listen to the word to be taught by Teacher Clark. But before that, let's watch this video. Dear Mom, I know you can't read this anymore. Well, I'm writing this to remind myself of all the awesome things the Lord has done. God delivered our people from Pharaoh, split the Red Sea, guided and fed them through the desert, fought of many enemies, taught them how to live. It was tough. Many times, I didn't even know if I had what it took. Leading millions of people through the desert. My wife's dad helped me with that though. You would have loved Zipporah. I didn't know what blew my mind more that these people were complaining and disobeying God all the time, or that God kept staying with us no matter how much we didn't deserve it. And God did it. He brought His people to the promised land. And I've realized that this whole awesome journey of faith started with you. You defied the Pharaoh by raising me in secret, and then when you couldn't hide me anymore, you had the strength to let God take me through the river and into the arms of the Pharaoh's daughter. Finally, no matter how dangerous it was, you presented yourself to be my nurse growing up. How scary those years must have been. I love you, Mom, for how you trusted that God had a purpose for me and a plan for our people and that you did whatever it took to save me and raise me that I might be used by God to raise and save His people. 
your son, Moses. The people of Israel increased and grew in number while they were in Egypt. The Pharaoh that first welcomed them to the land had long been gone and was now replaced by a new Pharaoh who didn't care much for the Israelites. This new king thought that the Israelites were a threat to the Egyptians because of how fast they grew in number. He thought that pretty soon, the Israelites would try to take over the land of Egypt. With that threat in mind, he forced the Israelites to slavery and ordered all the midwives to kill newborn baby boys. When that plan didn't work, the Pharaoh ordered that every boy, whether newborn or not, be thrown into the Nile River to drown. And our Mighty Mom story starts there. Jochebed and her husband had just welcomed a baby boy. Let's look at what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months, but when she could not hide him no longer, she got up a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants was walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw a baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. Moses actually had two mothers, his real mother, Jochebed, and his adoptive mother, the daughter of Pharaoh. Both were wonderful women who did their part in raising Moses, the person God would use to save the Israelites. And here's the point. Let us thank God for our moms and mother figures who helped us fulfill his great plans for our lives. Moses was still too young to understand why his mother had to throw him in the Nile River. All baby Moses knew was that he was uncomfortable and crying. And as a kid, we do not understand a lot of things our mother do for us. Sometimes, we even feel angry if our mom asks us to finish our homework before dinner, if mama had to work late, or even when mommy disciplines us. But one thing is for sure, God loves us and He placed our mothers in our lives for a reason. Mothers do what they can to help us because they love us and they want nothing but the best for us. God is actually using them to raise us so we can fulfill His great purpose in our lives. And for those who do not have mothers, God sends other women to act like our mothers to us. Just like how he sent Pharaoh's daughter to rescue Moses from the river and eventually raise him as her own son. Without our moms, mother figures, and other important people God placed in us, we can never hope to fulfill his great plans for us. This is why instead of resenting them for cramping our style, let us thank God for them because they are an expression of God's love and care for us. Because this is our power truth. God also expresses His love through mothers. Our power verse says in Isaiah 49 verse 15, The Lord answered, Can a woman forget the baby she nurses? Can she feel no kindness for the child she gave birth to? Even if she could forget her children, I will not forget. Jochebed did not know that her act of saving her son would one day result in the deliverance of the whole nation of Israel.
God knew when He sent His Son Jesus to earth that Jesus would one day suffer and die in order to save the whole world. But in His great love for us, God still did it anyway. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us people like our moms and mother figures to help us as we grow up. I pray that you continue to bless them and guide them. Please shower them with your love because they give us so much love to our whole family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for that, Teacher Clark. Indeed, it's a great reminder and a great point that we learned today that our parents, our moms, are also an expression of God's love toward us, okay? God sent them or gave us our parents, our moms, to care for us, to love us, to guide us, okay? And another thing we learned today is that in the same way that moms care for their children, God really, really, really cares for His children, okay? That He will not forget those who are His. God does not forget his people and that is such a great assurance for us right kids okay now before we go to our huddle time first we're gonna make our arts and crafts so if you have your arts and crafts materials beside you or not yet then do get them get ready because we're gonna make them right now all right let's go okay kids for arts and crafts we're going to need colored papers paper cup drinking straws, scissors, glue, and colored pens or crayons. Now grab your colored papers. I'm going to use pink, purple, and blue. And let's cut them into squares. Don't forget to ask help from your parents, kids! It should look something like this. Now let's grab our pink colored paper and fold it like this. Then like this. Then like this. And fold it like this. Then cut the extra part.
Then repeat it with the other colored papers, the purple and the blue. Now the fun part, let's draw our petals. You can decide any petal shape you want. I'm going to draw a normal petal just like this. The other one, I'll make a design just like this. This one, I'll make it a thinner version of the petal. Then let's cut, cut, cut. Then let's open our flower. Wow! Now let's grab our yellow colored paper or any colored paper you want. Then let's make three circles. Just like this. Then let's get our glue and stick it in the middle of our flower, just like this. Then let's get our cup, our colored pens, our crayons, and drinking straw. First, let's color our paper cup to look like a pot. Then let's prepare our drinking straws. Let's connect it to the flower.
But first, let's make our leaves. Just like this. You can decorate your leaves just like this and get your glue and stick it on the straw. Now let's stick our flower on the drinking straw. Just like this. If your glue doesn't stick well, you can use tape. Just like this. Now grab your remaining colored paper and you can place it inside the paper cup, just like this. Then let's put our paper flowers. And we're done! Yay! Great job, kids! Don't forget to give this to your parents! Alright, kids! Great job with those arts and crafts, okay? Those are amazing, <laughs> okay? Now, before we end or before we go, let's first have our huddle time question and you can discuss this with your parents or whoever is with you at home. And also, we'll talk more about this at our Zoom huddle later at 2 p.m. So our question for today is, what are you grateful for about your mom? Okay, What are you grateful for about your mom? So again, do discuss about this, do talk about this, and we'll also see you um, at our 2 p.m. huddle time. Now let's pray before we go. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord God, for today. Lord, thank you for giving us our moms, our parents, Lord, who are, who, who are there to take care of us, to help us. Lord, thank you because you, you also ultimately are our Father. Lord, thank you because you care so much for your children, God. Lord, I just pray that the, you would protect, continually protect the kids, Lord. May they have good health and their families all throughout the coming days, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Mm -hmm.